Hi hey everyone, so today I'm going to show you how I test my gold and silver jewelry with the acid scratch test. We have a little stack of gold and a stack of sterling, whoops, he's in the wrong pile there, uh, that we're going to test from yesterday's lot and make sure everything is as marked or not. So I'm going to get started with the gold and then we'll move on to the sterling and see what we have. So first I'm going to scratch this little ring. This was the one that didn't have a mark on it, but I was pretty sure was gold. So we're just going to give that a good scratch there. And then what I usually do when I'm doing this is I just kind of line up the order that I scratch in so I know which mark is for what piece so I can kind of keep track. And then we just go ahead along making lines. You want to dig deep enough into the piece of jewelry that if it was plated, you would be getting past that plating so that you're testing what's underneath. Um, if it's a piece you're planning on scrapping anyway, you don't really have to be that delicate about where you're scratching to be inconspicuous. Um, some pieces you might want to be a little bit more gentle with just in case you're going to be selling it. So we're just going to scratch everything here. Now, all of these rings were either unmarked or 14 karat. So what I'm going to do is just start with the 14 karat acid. Um, I use the JSP acids. They're fantastic. They always seem to work well for me. And uh, sometimes what I'll do if a piece is unmarked, I'll start as low as 10 karat and then work my way up. If it holds to the 10 karat acid, I will then move to the 14 or the 18 just to make sure because basically what happens is, let's say you're testing a scratch mark that's 10 karat gold. If it holds to the 10 karat acid, but then you use a 14 karat gold acid on it, the mark will disappear so you will know it is in fact 10 karat gold. So you can just move up through the acids until the mark disappears and that's how you know which one it is. So I usually just put a little stripe. Sometimes you get a little bubble, you can kind of pop, get it out of the way so you can see what you're doing. I put a little stripe of acid right over the line trying not to make the acids touch just so we don't get any mixed results. I'm gonna zoom in here so you guys can kind of get a better look. Okay. And then I just let it sit for a couple of seconds. Um, basically, you need that acid to do its work. So sometimes if something isn't real gold or silver, it might not react right away. You might see the line right away and then after a few seconds, it disappears. So you just want to give it that time so that you're certain it's doing its job. Um, as you can see, and as I can see, it looks like the lines are not fading underneath the acid. So that's good. These, this should mean that these are all ten, uh, 14 karat gold. So if you see, oh, the acid just went together there, but that's fine. It's the same acid. Um, if you see the third line in where I tested up top there, I could have made the scratch line a little a little thicker would have been good, but you can still see the acid and the, li the lines are holding under the acid. So I'm going to go ahead and say these are all definitely 14 karat, which is great because the one I wasn't sure about that wasn't marked, 14K. Very nice. All right, so we'll wipe off this acid and then we'll move on to the next gold rings. I'll usually wipe it off, push that stone to the side for a bit and use a second stone, excuse me, a second stone just so I'm not mixing acids. Now this one was marked 10K, so we will test that with the 10K acid. And I believe actually this one was too, so we will be checking that with the 10K acid as well. Usually if you have a ring, I would say almost always, if you have a ring that is marked 10K, it would not suddenly be 14 karat when you test. So you should really only need to test with that 10 karat acid. So those were the two 10 karat. And whoops, these were the two 14. All right, so we'll let that sit for a few seconds. Zoom in here so we can get a good idea of what's happening. And it does look like these are holding too. Sometimes with the uh, the lighting, it's kind of hard to tell. But let me get a closer look at this one. Yep, for sure. I would say those lines are definitely 
holding. It's a little hard to tell in this light. This one here was the one I wasn't sure about, but when I take it out of the light, I can see that the line is holding. So that is definitely 10K. Very nice. It's always exciting when you find gold and then the gold ends up actually being gold. Okay. Very good. Let's go ahead and test some of the sterling. I'm going to test this big old pretty filigree flower necklace first. Hoping this one is sterling. It's very cool. And I'll actually test both parts on this necklace. Every once in a while, you can come across a piece of jewelry where part of it is sterling and the rest is not. I would imagine if part of this is sterling that all of it would be, but it doesn't hurt to just double check that. Okay, this little medallion, which was marked 925. We'll do this ring. And we'll move this stone below it. And we'll do another line. We'll do this little charm. Oop. He's a tough one because he's articulated. <laughs> larger butterfly ring and this little bracelet. Okay, let me move these pieces over here and just into frame. All right, so now what I do to test my sterling, you there is a sterling acid which you can certainly use but I prefer to use the 18 karat acid and the reason for this is because what it will do for the reaction is it will turn the line a bright blue if it's sterling which I find is super easy to read. Uh, the regular sterling acid will turn the line kind of like a brownish red color which to me isn't as obvious so I like to use the 18 karat acid to test sterling. I find it just works a little bit better for me. You'll start to see, I, I'm sure some of these are sterling, you'll start to see that bright blue color that it will turn. You can actually already see it on top here. Actually, you can already see it on all of them. Um, let me zoom into that top one so you can get a good view. You can see the lines are turning that bright milky blue, immediately indicating that it is sterling silver. And same for the ones down here. So luckily, all of these pieces were sterling, which is awesome. Um, and I find, too, that the 18 karat acid turns the lines that blue color fairly quickly. So it's a nice, quick test for sterling, which is always very nice. So that's great. All of these pieces did end up being sterling. Um, even the ones that we weren't sure about, like this bracelet, which was not marked, but I just had a feeling... Uh, this very cool butterfly ring with the opals. I wasn't sure about this one. I The way it looked, I thought it was sterling, but I just wasn't positive because it was a little chunky, but sometimes artisan pieces are, so that's great. Um, the butterfly ring that wasn't marked, and as well as the really pretty filigree flower necklace that was just marked Mexico, but I had a feeling was sterling, so that's great. This little guy's going to need a new clasp there, but that shouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, but wonderful. I'm really happy. It's always great to find out that your precious metals are actually precious metals. So thank you guys. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next one.